Uh, my name is uh, Marcel Ambrose. I'm an associate professor in digital communications engineering, so telecoms, uh, and I'm the program manager of, of the program late uh, for MSC Electronics, uh, Electrical and Electronic Engineering, and for MSC Robotics. Now I've gathered a lot of pictures here hoping that uh, it'll give you a good uh, uh, sort of picture of what the MSCs are. On the left, we have some of the subjects on um, uh, electronics, um, and on the right, some of the subjects on robotics. And at the bottom, a little bit about the place you're going to be in. And uh, I think they look all uh, very good. Uh, and one key bit to carry from here is that the Plymouth location allows for an excellent balance of work and life. I mean, I've lived here for 25 years, and I still like uh, the the beaches of Cornwall or Dartmouth and so on. And I, our courses actually date back a uh, decade or two. Uh, and uh, um, I think they are uh, very good courses. And I will try to do them credit with this presentation. So to start, first of all, uh, we are accredited by the IET and the accreditation message is like this. So you can become a chartered engineer if uh, you present, uh, uh, if you do the SMSC uh, and, and have a, a, a chartered uh, undergraduate uh, program, uh, so you finish the chartered undergraduate program, even if you haven't, uh, this can be a good step towards accreditation, but you will have to sort of do other things. So it contributes to accreditation. And I believe we have recently uh, a visit from the IT and they told me that uh, actually they work in, in India to accredit uh, many of the uh, higher education institutions there. Uh, just to reassure you, our programs are regularly checked, and uh, believe me, it's a careful check in which they take, talk to students, Dipankar can tell you, uh, and uh, they talk to industry to make sure that the program actually is useful for industry and it's a world tour. So we had the recent accreditation visit, which I led on our side this spring, which extended uh, our accreditation to the full period they actually give. So they were very happy to work with our course. And first of all, the key elements of the courses, both uh, electronics and robotics are that there is a, a strong support by technicians uh, for the course. So practical oriented, there's a lot of industry involvement, which means jobs. And it means that industry uh, actually um, helps us prepare students for their job. There is a, um, a lot of hardware equipment available for you guys and online resources, uh, provide, uh, uh, which, which some of them we are provided during lockdown. Uh, and um, basically, uh, we've been introduced for the MSC a formal research project proposal including things that are useful for industry like risk assessment uh, and ethics. There's a part-time route available, well, not in name, but as a possibility, although for international students, you need to check the visa implication, and maybe Daniel can say something about it. Uh, how it works, if, you, if, if you're allowed to do it from immigration uh, um, issues, uh, is by ch choosing a subset of modules and uh, um, uh, do that in one year and then the other subsequent module in the next year. Informally, what we have done is to actually limit the duration of each module or a contact time of each module to uh, one day so that you can easily sort of select the days uh, when you are actually doing the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the MSc. And it normally uh, helps if you have work constraints. And we have part-time students uh, doing it like this. Now, the program has the same accreditation status and uh, it's actually... Uh, basically very similar from all the other points of view. So the key points uh, I have said about accredited, so good job opportunity, uh, uh, and that's verified by somebody that's, by a, a body that's actually gone to many uh, universities and compared the programs. And uh, like I said, they were very happy with the way uh, our course is linked to industry. It's practical based, but uh, we just don't blindly just build things, but it's also theoretic. So theoretically, so understanding, uh, the support for theoretical understanding. We have uh, significant practical resources, labs uh, and technician team. Uh, we have significant uh, theoretical resources. We have access to uh, the most recent publications in the field, IEEE Explore, uh, and we have uh, a lot of online uh, access, book access in the library. It's research informed for, from our uh, strong research groups, and I'm going to try to show you what we're doing. Uh, and there's many opportunities of continuing publishing your projects, for example, or continuing to a PhD. Um, 
basically what, what we're trying to provide you with is to learn uh, research methods uh, so that in the future, as things change, I mean, I've been uh, uh, in academia for 20 years and uh, things have changed uh, in, in terms of what's uh, popular, what's, what's um, sort of fashionable from communications and the communications bubble 10 years ago to um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, what's next? But if you look, the fundamentals are still the same. And if you know how to sort of pick up the fundamentals and actually apply them to a new field, then you will be flexible uh, and, and uh, always sort of never obsolete if you wish. There's excellent uh, uh, opportunities for um, uh, employment and we have students employed in machine learning, AI applications, communication systems, power system design, and even stock mar market analysis, although probably not as many as the uh, business uh, MSc. I know uh, a recent student that actually works with a um, um, basically space company and has actually put his power supply, he was quite happy on the alumni on the um, LinkedIn, has put a power supply up in the orbit, although it's a bit difficult to actually maintain it once it's there. But uh, he was uh, sort of surprised. I mean, he's feeling good that his contribution was going around the earth. Uh, so um, the two MSCs, I'll just give you some details here, but I'll try to not to talk that much, just show you uh, a few details and then um, uh, uh, take questions to see what you're really interested in and detail in there. Uh, the presentation is long, but I will sort of try to keep it short and how much I talk. So the structure of the MSc, we have two semesters, uh, the autumn semester, and the spring semester, and there's three modules in each of the semester, and they are assessed immediately after the semester. So you, you do the modules and then you get the exams uh, and pass the exams and you're done with it and you start the second part. And at the end, you have the MSc project, which is individual and you can choose it and you get help uh, in actually choosing the right project that interests you. Now, the modules that we have, they are a good balance for uh, uh, electrical and electronic engineering, trying to cover a reasonably wide range of subjects, although electrical and electric, electronic engineering is very wide, so you have to choose, and we have had to make choices for the um, uh, program itself, and they change, actually, as, uh, as the field, uh, sort of the, the most important parts of the field changes. In fact, the electrical and electronics uh, uh, MSc was actually called communications engineering uh, and signal processing. So now it's electrical electronics because the communications sort of have become still important, but not uh, sort of the uh, most important parts. There are others that are fashionable now, like machine learning, like um, um, uh, renewable energy uh, and, um, and, and nanotechnology, graphene, sensors, and so on. So the uh, modules we have in semester one is nanotechnology, nanoelectronics, then communications, and then software engineering because uh, of embedded systems and, and, and things um, like this. And there's nothing that sort of can exist these days in, in, in uh, engineering without some sort of programming. And uh, in fact, um, uh, our colleagues in, in, in other fields uh, would like some programming in their uh, modules, uh, uh, in their uh, uh, programs. Uh, semester two, we have integrated power systems in relation to renewable energy and power. Signal processing, but it's sort of more mod modern version, which links now to deep learning and machine learning and so on. Um, and then we actually have an option in, uh, in the uh, MSc, which was actually sort of introduced quite recently and it's quite popular, I, I could see with the students. Uh, and that is, uh, we can, you can either choose mechanics uh, for offshore renewable energy systems. So renewable energy, but in context of an actual applied system, and or science and technology of autonomous, uh, autonomous vehicles. Okay, so that's the MSc content. And I can show you a little bit about what the modules are about and how they are supported by research. You can see here nanotechnology. We have a, a state-of-the-art clean room in, to which you have access. There was access even now, Deepanka can confirm or sort of correct, uh, even in the situation when we actually had um, the pandemic, uh, although it was more limited access and we were lucky that it was in the first semester rather than the second when the pandemic got worse. Uh, MSc students actually built uh, uh, hardware uh, based on this. Uh, and uh, we actually have MSc projects in, in, this, in, this, uh, in this field. Uh, here, what you have is a YouTube video, which I'm not gonna play because unless you want to see it, um, 
because it might take just too long to go through the presentation, uh, in which the students have actually built uh, um, graphene uh, hardware for transistors uh, with the purpose of improving uh, mobile phones. So mobile phones for higher sort of most more recent standards, but graphene, which is the uh, um, material we can build in there is actually very good for sensors and many applications, for example, in biomedicine and wherever you need a better detection uh, of, of something like, uh, I don't know, soil chemistry or um, a radio wave or um, uh, some sort of chemical condition and so on. So we have actually a lot of funding in there and uh, had, have had several PhD uh, projects uh, and, and it's ongoing. Yeah, so this, this is the module, this is the researcher supported. You can see pictures. Uh, that's one of the PhD students. I'm actually the third supervisor uh, for her working in the clean room. So it's a, a group of uh, French students that visit us in the summer and have access in the clean room. And this is how you would look uh, if you went to work in the, in the clean room. Um, so that's nanotechnology. There's more detail here. PhD student that recently finished and works uh, as a lecturer now. And all the material, all, all the equipment that we actually have. Um, and this is a bit of details uh, and the um, uh, actual lecturers uh, working uh, in this field. The other module is integrated power systems and it covers um, power systems, many aspects of power systems. We started with renewable energy in the past, uh, solar panels and so on, but the lecturers changed and currently we have a lecturer that has a lot of experience in uh, Babcock in, in, in industry uh, and for example it used to build power supplies for submarines and things like that for many years. Um, and he is teaching actually the more general power uh, generation and distribution systems. Recently, uh, I am being told by the uh, associate head that um, as a result of this module, several students actually have been able to secure jobs in power industry. And the feedback uh, sort of says that this module have given them the confidence to actually apply for these jobs in the first place. Um, the other part is power electronics and renewable energy, which is, of course, uh, another field that, that, that is very much in fashion these days, uh, uh, especially solar panel, wind power, panel, uh, wind, wind power and so on. Uh, this is complemented actually by the other, by the optional module, which is the offshore renewable energy, which is supplied by another part of the school. Uh, we are trying to actually bring expertise together to improve the uh, MSc and the, the material we teach. Uh, it complements the integrated power system modules and really puts um, um, signal processing for power systems in context and shows you the mechanics of it, how much energy you can generate and so on. And it has uh, access to a lot of material, a lot of equipment related to that. So um, uh, power in context really. Signal processing, like I said, uh, we used to have sort of more um, classic signal processing, trans Fourier transform, Laplace transform, and so on. But this has changed and is more uh, oriented towards um, artificial vision as a, an application, but just to exemplify the actual methods and based on deep learning and, 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 and some of the new machine learning techniques that are more and more uh, sort of um, popular in many fields. So even if you are doing uh, electronic or electrical engineering or robotics, you will come into contact, you will be aware of machine learning and other techniques which are very useful these days for, for many fields. The course works project-based as many uh, of them are and uh, you get to uh, actually uh, do something practical in here. Uh, the other part, uh, and the, the signal processing is actually supported by uh, research and we have a signal processing and data science group. And you can see here what I mean. Uh, the signal processing is not just where it transforms and what the, the classical engineering tools, but artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, for this. Because this artificial intelligence machine learning, there are sort of generic words, if you wish. And it's just, they are just a way of actually uh, approaching a task. Uh, and it doesn't matter what that task is. And, and, um, uh, and in this case, it's electronics and, and robotics. Okay. Uh, more traditional digital and wireless communications, but of course uh, there's applications for it like 5G. Uh, and uh, this module gives you a, a good background in the uh, fundamentals and applications, for example, standards. And, and in the normal tradition, you actually do a research-based coursework in which you use 
applications to actually learn more about the field because it's a very wide field and you can choose your actual subject. And that brings me to uh, something that I really appreciate, for example, at the university as a resource, and that's access to the latest publication. It costs a lot, but it's provided and you have access to this and, and uh, we try to actually help you use it because um, this is the kind of thing you would use if you actually did research in industry or development. Okay, so uh, that's... Uh, in a bit of a nutshell, that is what the uh, MSC AAA is. I can see that I've lost one student, <laughs> so I'm not sure if it was the presentation or they just realized that um, it must have gone somewhere else. Well, it might just be a connection issue that can happen sometimes. Mm. Um, the, the drop has only just this second happened, so it may just be that they wanted to hear about AAA. So if they want yes. to come back, they can, of course, do so. Thank you. I just want to have a quick a clarification about the the, the part-time question if i may yes, yes, i yes. mean part-time students they, they can do that if they have the the right visa or the right passport the thing, yes. um, but for the majority of international students coming mm. into the uk they tend to come in on a student visa mm. for a student visa you do need to be full-time so i do need to clarify that but don't worry that would always be uh, clarified and, and, and checked carefully upon application anyway this... you need to see nationality passport etc um, but what i would say of course is that, that one of the benefits of studying full-time in the uk for a master is the duration is pretty short as so you can get done with your master in a year and be ready to hit the job market, especially with the new graduate route visa, which gives you a two year window after graduation to look for work in the UK and do work in the UK. That's actually quite a good deal. So I wouldn't be too worried if, if it turns out that full time is your only option. That's pretty standard and, and pretty attractive in the UK. Yeah, and in fact, I have your slides here, which I uh, uh, I put um, uh, about the uh, about the, This is why I said that they, they need to check the visa because uh, mm. I know that we wanted at some point to provide even uh, placements, uh, which uh, didn't work very well because of visa implications. But I think the visa now is uh, 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 from several some several aspects actually more. Um, um, flexible isn't it but, but yeah um, i think it's actually a lot better now because with a graduate route you can get your degree get it done in a year and then yeah. not only are you able with the graduate route visa to look for work in the uk mm. but of course having completed your master you're fully qualified and therefore really able to hit the job market um, yeah. kind of running so i think it's it's definitely a plus now compared with a year or two ago yeah definitely i just had a phd student who just finished his um, degree and he applied for the visa extension which is a year in which you can actually look for look for work perfect and thanks and before we go ahead the only other bit i thought i would um point out is if there is a video link sometimes they don't they don't click and play too well on on youtube or sorry on zoom where we are now so that's that's why we wouldn't put it live now but i might ask marcel if you could just copy the url yeah. um for the youtube video yeah. and then pop it in the chat and yeah that should be good practice I, it in our own time that'd be great. i actually have it here uh, uh, so for example that um video i mentioned uh, where is it? Um, there it is, and it's a mobile phone standard. So they, it is here. I'll copy that. And it's basically a student project, and they've actually documented this um, um, on the YouTube, on YouTube. So there it is. That's so great. hopefully they'll know what the video. I have a, a few others uh, in here, for example. Um, Another project, this is for robotics, uh, and, and, and that's, um, uh, he's actually published this in a conference. So, um, uh, that, that's, um, but that's sort of coming later. <clears throat> okay, okay. Well, we look forward to, to seeing that one later as well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks very much. Should we go on with robotics? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, MSC Robotics, a similar structure. In fact, some of the modules are shared, but the MSC Robotics is a lot more focused towards a robotics application. And, and a certain part of our robotics application, and that is building <clears throat> to some extent uh, or using existing robots and then programming them and then sort of making them do uh, things, intelligent, uh, clever things. So again, machine learning, artificial intelligence and so on. Uh, 
Uh, so what do we have here? We have topics in advanced intelligent robots. Uh, 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 this, this actually uh, acknowledges the fact that even limited to robotics, it's, it's a large field. And what we want to expose the students to at MSc level is what is what, what are the sort of most recent uh, uh, fields or what, what interests our lecturers do have in that field and, and they are research active and then they present their research. Uh, it's um, a research module in which you learn how to do research methods and, and then to apply them to, to learn uh, a certain aspect of the field. That's useful again in the same context that I mentioned uh, to you and that is uh, when you're in, in, in industry you're often presented with this issue of actually uh, finding out something new and, and getting the information using it to, uh, to your advantage and, and, and this is what this module covers. And then there are sort of more taught modules in which you get uh, to learn about intelligent sensors and control, software engineering again that is embedded, uh, you need to program the robots. Advanced robot design and prototyping in which you actually build some robots. Uh, the most uh, recent ones with uh, uh, robots with flexible arms or, or soft uh, arms, so that that's for safety and, and uh, so that they don't break things and so on. So they were controlled uh, to be sort of more human-like. Artificial vision and deep learning, that signal processing, also for robotics, uh, science and technology of autonomous vehicles. You will see in a minute what that actually covers. Again, there's a summer, uh, there's a summer project, and again, it's an individual project, and you can choose. But if you don't know what to choose, there is a lot of help to actually uh, um, uh, uh, sort of make sure you make the right choice. Marcel, as we just, uh, just as you're changing slide, and sorry to interrupt, but it might be helpful that you know there's a question that's just come in from Bharat. Yes. Asked, uh, can I know until which level do we deal with AI in our curriculum if I choose MSc Robotics? So how much AI is involved and perhaps what the differences are between AI programs and robotics programs? I see, yes. Yes, uh, well, uh, we, we do, the way we deal with AI is it's applied to actual robotics uh, 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 system. So the, the thing is, the thing with this AI is it's a general thing. Yeah? So it's very, um, uh, uh, it, you can see that there's AI for markets, there's AI and, and so on. So uh, you deal with it to the extent of which it's actually necessary to make a robot intelligent, to make a robot uh, be able to actually um, recognize things in an image to actually do something that uh, that's useful. For example, uh, I noticed that, that I can show you here a robot that uh, inspects uh, pipes. In, uh, so it basically just uh, warms through a pipe and actually detects uh, uh, breaks in it and so on. A problem with clarifying what, you know, a, a question about AI is that it's so generic that uh, it, we can almost call anything that's uh, so, so, sort of got intelligent as, as AI. So how far does it go? And how far does it go for robotics is in, into actually making the robots be able to uh, do things on their own to actually uh, uh, um, sort of go to disaster areas where people cannot go and, and so on. So this is the kind of extent. So we don't teach AI specifically, but we do teach it to depth. Uh, so for example, in other AI uh, uh, programs like the AI in computing, they, they uh, sort of um, teach, it, teach it from a, a computing point of view, if you wish. And in here, uh, we, we, we actually teach it in, in, in depth and how you actually apply AI for, for robotic systems. I'll show you a bit more as, as I go through there to so see the kind of applications uh, you have for AIs. So one module, the module on topics in uh, advanced intelligent robotics, hopefully that sort of answered the question. Uh, it's, it's, it's a difficult question to answer because AI can mean different things for different people. Uh, and I don't think there is a sort of top level to AI, if you wish, uh, going all the way, because it's so generic and, and it's sort of developing uh, that, uh, that it's just, it just depends what, what you're looking, what, what application you're looking to. So several different, different topics in here for topics in intelligent robotics. Uh, this year we had advanced control by Dr. Ian Howard, robot control learning, Mario Gianni, and then human robot interaction for Dr. Chun Sun Lee. Uh, these are the lecturers, some of the main lecturers in robotics. Uh, there was a research coursework in which you actually learn uh, on, on your own, but with help 
uh, from a dedicated member of staff uh, that that was the sort of on, uh, research part of the module uh, of a choice topics about so that basically it presented with a fashionable topics in if, if you wish and sort of try to see how much you can learn from the material you can find so a kind of research project but also you're presented with seminars uh, by by different speakers uh, from uh, international experts in the field so there's one every week that you can uh, attend uh, students did get actually uh, opportunity to publish in relevant conferences i'll show you um, the module where they actually publish for but it's a kind of research related and research methods taught in these modules uh, um, uh, to support your research course or so uh, the uh, MSc is not only about the material itself and uh, about the uh, sort of taught subjects it's also trying to show you trying to get you to do to do research uh, and trying to to teach you how you do it and, and that's probably one of the most important skills that, that you actually get from an MSc. Software uh, engineering for distributed systems. This, this is actually common to uh, electronics and robotics, and it's a practical project based. So you're given a hardware platform, uh, which can be mobile or static, and it can do things like sense things around, and it can, uh, it can sort of avoid obstacles. The application is quite wide, and you get to program it from the, the, the bottom to top so you make it communicate to other systems and make it transmit data and so on and you can use different programming language languages what you'll find is that we don't actually teach you in detail the programming language uh, these days in industry the um, um, uh, uh, things are programmed in, in what's easiest to program for the task so if it turns out that something like python is the easiest you can actually go through a sort of tutorial on python and then apply it to the um, I demonstrated that to the students. I've never done Python in my life. And I've actually sort of read it up and, and made uh, the, the um, computer communicate with the robot. So that was part of, we, we actually do show students how, how to do some of these things. It's important uh, because in industry, you just need to pick them up. And, and, and I know because my wife works in, in programming and she tells me there's like so many techniques and actually uh, uh, doing things that, that you keep need to learn. Um, the applications can be agricultural systems that we have, uh, something soil or robotic systems related to location, related to robots communicating and go sort of doing things together. Although I don't think the coursework went that far. Uh, it went more or less towards uh, be, uh, robots being able to communicate and be controlled robot, uh, remotely. Science and technology of autonomous uh, vehicles. Here we have another link to a project. Uh, what does it do? What does it cover? Uh, example projects are autonomous robots, which are able to do things on their own. And the, um, there's quite a lot of research there by uh, uh, Dr. Mario Gianni. He's involved in many projects, which are, uh, initially were related to disaster areas, where you've got robots that do things uh, in, in places where people can't go and, and sort of figure out where they are by themselves and so on. So that's AI. Um, then uh, another project was um, actually the robots um, um, like drones flying out and inspecting uh, wind, wind turbines, blades to see if they're not cracked and so on. And uh, more recent, I think there's a project uh, on robots for nuclear facilities where it's dangerous for people maybe to go and, and robots could, could do it uh, much easier. Um, basically, in this, in this um, the, the coursework in this, uh, and, and, and the projects related to this um, uh, module actually result in student publications. And I've got here from uh, Mario the actual conference. You can see it in November 2020. Uh, Jonathan Whedon is uh, the student over here, Mario Gianni, uh, published um, this in, uh, in a conference, as the conference, SSRR uh, 2020. Um, and uh, uh, you can see the, um, and I think the other one, it's another group of our students and Mario as, as well. So there's, there's quite a lot of opportunity to actually do research at this level and actually publish it in conferences. Uh, and this particular thing that was published and it looks pretty good, it's a robot that uh, can go through pipes and, um, and detect uh, um, 
detect cracks and detect problems that that you might have you can you can see that that's very useful because uh, if the pipe is uh, inaccessible any other way uh, a robot that can move through it uh, should be uh, quite useful otherwise you might if it's in a building somewhere you might have to break the wall to actually get to the pipe and you're not sure whether there is a problem or not with it so that's the kind of application other applications that we have here, uh, uh, this example, uh, there was quite a bit of work being done in agricultural robots. Uh, there's uh, quite, uh, uh, it, they're quite popular at the moment. And, and one uh, problem is how do you uh, make agriculture more efficient, less costly, and so on. Uh, although this robot looks quite costly at the moment, and I think they are at the moment. Uh, I think the hope is really that uh, as technology develops, like with everything else, uh, they come to a point where it's not going to be that costly. Uh, and um, currently we have uh, uh, projects looking at picking fruits or vegetables. You can see the robot trying to pick uh, cabbage, I think is there. Uh, and, and that's in, in a collaboration with farms and, and um, there's a lot of funding centrally. And in fact, it's a, it's a big, project national level and probably international level or you can do uh, how do you grow vegetables intelligently and how you sort of sample the soil and how you um, uh, control provide a con control environment for the uh, vegetables and fruits to grow uh, or how do you investigate uh, uh, fields um, um, autonomously so survey fields and, and uh, re relate the position using gps and then report that there are some problems here and there, the soil is not good in some places and so on. Uh, and this is actually quite a recent uh, project, which I haven't, uh, because of the timing, managed to get a, a link for, but uh, I, I know it's a, a current research project that we do with uh, some of our technicians and, and apparently is, is very successful. Uh, it was initially initiated by one of our PhD students uh, who developed this sort of more flexible arm uh, uh, with, with biggest characteristic was that it's not going to squish the fruit, uh, not going to destroy it. So it, it sort of adapts so that it, it, it picks it up without squeezing it too much. Um, OK, so I think I've told you some of the uh, salient aspects, the important aspects. Uh, I sort of want to uh, re sort of reiterate the key point is that uh, we're trying to make this MSc practically oriented and learn by doing, but reinforce that with theory so that they are at proper MSc level. We have a significant technician support and state of the art equipment. You can see some uh, of the things here. And normally, in normal times, there is good access to the labs. And we have tried to actually provide as much as we could uh, in the current situation. Hopefully, in the future years, things will change back to normal. We have a really excellent library. I, I love it. I find a lot of information in the library, and there's a lot of help uh, from the librarians. You can book a study room, you can book a, 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 a quiet table, or, or, or you can just sort of find resources in the library. There's 24 hour access, in fact, uh, seven days a week, apart for uh, Christmas, I'm being told, actual Christmas day. You can go to the library. And in fact, people have been able to go to the library uh, uh, during the pandemic. Um, there is a, a lot of investment in it and in, in the right places, really. And we have access to the newest publications. So if it's a research uh, uh, MSc, really, we have all the research material available. And currently, and, and, and helped by the pandemics, everything's recorded and available online. And last but not least, I would say there is a, an excellent environment. I, I mean, I love it around here. Some of the pictures are mine. I'm quite happy with uh, Dartmoor around here. Um, uh, the beaches, and there are many beautiful beaches. And this is from downtown, close to the university in Barbican. Uh, so there's some. Um, and, and lately, uh, in the last uh, summers, uh, we've got uh, beautiful weather, really. Not as hot as in India, I'm sure. Uh, but that might be a plus for you guys, maybe if you had too much uh, heat over there. Uh, um, another key bit is uh, definitely excellent employment opportunities. I can't boast salaries like the um, uh, business uh, and data analytics, analytics, but the salaries are quite good. And I'm, I've got uh, um, our statistics show that our courses are very good um, uh, employment uh, rate. Uh, what we basically do is we, we, we send um, 
emails or communicate with the students that have done the course and ask them to fill in a form. Uh, some of them don't want to, uh, so um, because they're too busy uh, doing their jobs. But many of them, uh, with uh, the intervention of the lecturers, they actually fill in the form and we find that they have very interesting jobs. And that's valid for both electrical and en electronic engineering and robotics. And I have an example here, which she was my student uh, and MSc uh, electronics. Uh, she went on to do an MRes or more research oriented, if you wish, and a PhD. And then she worked with a local company uh, on so-called KTP, Knowledge Transfer uh, a Partnership, in which we apply research to uh, problems for um, industry. And uh, the project was actually uh, uh, signaling for trains, uh, basically use communications theory to uh, help trains not collide with each other. Uh, current systems were sort of failing at the time because of the uh, big traffic. Uh, and that's the project she worked on. Uh, the company got millions of pounds in uh, investments because of the project. Uh, she got a job at the company, but decided that she wanted to do uh, market analysis in London where she is now, actually, uh, and it's a very important person, really, a lot more important than her uh, former supervisor, I would say. <laughs> but one thing is good, I can ask her if I need a favour. <laughs> so here we are, that's, that's one example that, like I said, there are many examples of this kind, and um, uh, there is no problem in this field, uh, finding jobs, in fact, even affected by the pandemic. Uh, because of working from home and things like that, I do not think that our field was as much impacted as as others have been actually related to that there have been a couple of questions coming in uh, mm -hmm. already from Bharat um, and he's mentioned how he's enjoying the seminar very much that's great thank you um, he wants to know a little bit more about what kind of career opportunities there are so you've given a great example there Marcel um, yes for robotics and AI in the UK um, especially, he said, especially uh, related to tier two sponsorship kind of jobs. Uh, mm. And a, and a follow-up question, is there any opportunity for a co-op or assistantship? Uh, I'm not sure what co-op, what was the uh, co-op? Um... I'm not sure myself. I'm wondering if it's, uh, is it like an internship? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, Barrett, if you want to clarify your understanding of co-op, um, that would be helpful. But any more examples or, or ideas related to job prospects or career prospects for robotics and AI in the UK? Can, I can uh, let me just. Uh, there's some on our um, uh, some on our um, uh, web page, but I would say that at the moment, based on our research projects, for example, there is a lot of uh, opportunities for a PhD kind of um, uh, um, a P PhD kind of. Uh, uh, projects, so you can actually go towards the research part. Then we have companies such as Babcock, which is local, uh, which are looking into both electrical and electronic engineering and robotics. We have many placements uh, in the UK. Uh, this is at the undergraduate level, but they are robotics and machine learning oriented, uh, uh, which, uh, which basically show that there is a lot of interest uh, in the companies in the um, UK. I don't have a specific example, unfortunately, uh, uh, at, at the moment, but I'm, I'm sure that um, uh, there, there, there are quite a, quite a few of them. Uh, I've been um, actually doing a placement visit for one of our robotics students uh, in a company uh, sort of further up north, well, not further north than Plymouth, um, in which they actually, uh, they're actually doing all sorts of uh, uh, projects related to machine vision, for example, communications and so on. And uh, they're doing machine learning technologies and, and um, uh, AI. Um, so I would say, uh, I don't have examples, but I think there are plenty of opportunities. Now, I'm not sure about the tier two uh, visa. I wouldn't think that uh, if you have the MSc expertise, uh, the tire two shouldn't matter in, in, in um, uh, combination with the uh, sort of um, um, the less visa restrictions that you have, because basically they should allow you to um, uh, to get to, to get a job uh, uh, in a similar way that um, that uh, um, other uh, uh, students 
uh, can. Well, yes, uh, I mean, I, I'll chip in if I may. I mean, with, with tier two as a, a working visa, you have to be working essentially for either like a kind of a multinational or a government type employer typically. And you have to be typically earning a certain salary in the sort of 22 plus thousand pounds per annum. But of course, with a master degree in robotics, that's almost a given. Hmm. You've got the degree. You're yes. not going to not get that kind of level of employment in terms of uh, salary. Yeah. But I think I think the news is a bit better now because of this graduate route. You've actually got more time that you can go and get some work experience. And that can lead, of course, to better experience and contacts with an industry that may lead to this type of tier two um, opportunities later. So I think both options would remain on the table for an excellent graduate. And of course, I always have to say, it depends on you as a student. It depends what you're willing to put in, the projects that you do, the level that you achieve, uh, much is opportunity that we give you that then you, you have to run with but I think we do have good examples I'm just going to copy and paste now the MSC Robotics web page link into the chat here because at the bottom of that page there's a, a few examples of some of our graduates and students and it's good to, just to see the kind of things they've got up to so you can think, do that in your own time back, okay? I mean I mean the, the only thing uh, to say there is that uh, uh, this is quite recent um, the, 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 the visa uh, it's, it's quite recent, so um, um, that's why we might not have uh, so many examples uh, exactly related to that. I think the news, as I said, uh, the news regarding visas in the UK has just gotten really good recently. Um, and, and quite a few years ago, it, it was already good, and then government changed and the visas changed, but it's all coming back to yes. us now. Exactly, that, that was quite a shock. Really getting, yes, it's really quite a good time to be looking into a master yes. in the UK, especially in this kind of field. I'll just put up a quick slide if you can see it, hopefully you can, just to point out the tuition fees for the programs. The postgraduate taught master in science and engineering for international fee is £16,200, but there are scholarships that start at £2,000 and range up as high as 50% of the tuition fee reduction, as uh, Dr. David mentioned in the, the main introduction earlier today. Um, obviously, the higher scholarship has a, a higher uh, criteria attached to it. So uh, essentially, we're looking at first class degree holders in relevant degrees for consideration for the bigger scholarships. And if you don't get a bit of bigger scholarship, you might get a smaller one. Um, but the other thing to point out is that the United Kingdom visa office say you need about £1,000 a month to live when you're not in London um, and quite a lot more if you're in London and I've lived in both places Plymouth and London and uh, actually that figure for Plymouth that's too high because Plymouth is pretty much substantially cheaper than that to live in depending <laughs> on your lifestyle if you want an ocean view single bedroom apartment then okay maybe you will spend a thousand pounds a month but I know students who live two minutes or five minutes walk from campus living for under 100 pounds per week for their rent, like 85 pounds per week or something like that. But of course, no commuting time and no commuting costs because they're so near. And there's no way that they're gonna spend a thousand pounds a month on, on living in that scenario. What are they eating? And um, But the point is, it's a very, very cost-effective place, cost-efficient place. So a scholarship, if you can get it, great. The tuition fee is already pretty competitive and you can do the comparisons in other places. You'll see what I mean there. Um, but if you get a scholarship, that's great. But the living cost, the real living cost makes a difference too. So I thought I would just bring that up 